I will walk you through step-by-step -step how to import an image into Illustrator and then create your own abstract artwork inspired by that image. When you open up Illustrator, you are greeted with a welcome page. Let's jump right in and click on New File. The new document window pops up where you can select a preset or enter more specific measurements at the right. At the top, you will see a handy navigation. I will go to the Web tab and then select the Web Large preset. Now we are inside our workspace. If you go to the window dropdown and then workspace, you will see some choices. I am selecting typography because I like that layout. Workspaces are simply presets for where to arrange your tools. I also recommend making sure that the control toolbar is checked under the window dropdown. Now let's go to file place. My cursor is loaded with the image and I will click once on the artboard to place the image. I am going to undo to show you a second way of inserting this image. We can also click and drag to predetermine the size that we might prefer. Now I will go ahead and match the artboard bounds to the edges of my image by clicking on the artboard tool and then dragging in at the handles Let's get off the artboard tool by clicking on the selection tool. Now I will click on the layers tab to take a look at the layers panel. I am going to add a layer. I will double click on it to rename it background. Then I will add one more layer and name it rectangles. I will also rename layer one to original. Now I will lock the original layer by clicking on the lock icon. Let's go get the swatch panel from the window drop down. You can place the panel anywhere, but I will add it to my existing menu by hovering over it until I see a blue line. Now it will stay there. Next, I'll select the eyedropper tool and choose places on the image that I would like to sample and save to my swatches. After selecting a color from the image I like, I can drag the color down to my saved swatch area. I'll choose around 10 different colors. This next bit isn't necessary, but you can go to your Libraries tab and save these colors for future use. I'll click on Create New Library and give it a name. Then I'll select the swatch colors by clicking and holding down the Shift key to select them all. And then I will click on Add Selected Swatches to my current library. Finally, it's time to create. Let's go get the Rectangle tool. You will notice if you click and hold, you will see a few different shape options. I am just going to use a rectangle tool for this project. The tool won't let me do anything if I am on a locked or invisible layer. That is why I locked the original layer. I'll switch over to the rectangles layer. Now I will draw my first rectangle. I'll select a stroke for it so that I can explain how that works. I'm also increasing the line weight of the stroke. A stroke is basically a border. The Properties tab is a great place to make changes to your selected design element. With my rectangle selected, I can change some properties right here. Let's say I don't want a stroke, which I don't, so I will click on the stroke color and then select the None icon. It is easy to change the size of the rectangle by dragging the handles in or out in any direction. I'll make it real small and then drag it over one of the orange berries. The zoom in and out shortcuts are Command plus and Command minus. Zoom options are also located in the status bar. I can save some time by copy and pasting since I want to make a bunch of berry squares. The whole idea behind this project is to create an abstract rendering inspired by this photo. The end product will not have any trace of the original. Since it would be overwhelming to cover every part of the artboard with rectangles, it makes sense to draw one big rectangle as my background, hence the background layer. As I create, I will turn it off and on to check my progress. I will lock that layer too so that I can be sure that all of my rectangles fall under the rectangles layer. You can change your rectangles to any color by selecting one of your swatches. I will draw some purple rectangles to mimic the wings. I can rotate them by selecting the rotate tool. It's a little frustrating this way because I have to keep toggling between the selection tool and the rotate tool. 
there is another way to rotate that I will show in a moment. I will draw some darker purple rectangles. Then I can hover over the corners of the rectangles to rotate without having to leave the selection tool much faster. My preference is to have these darker rectangles sit behind the lighter ones. For that, we need the Arrange tool. That is located at the Object drop-down. Another way to arrange our shapes is to do that in the Layers panel. We can drag the rectangle layer down and behind the others in this way. As we keep adding rectangles though, this manner can get a little difficult. To save you from boredom, I created a time lapse of adding a bunch more rectangles. I used the Arrange tool a lot, so don't forget about that. Again, the idea here is that the original image is used for inspiration. It's a roadmap for where to place the rectangles. When saving, you will want to turn on the background layer. None of the original image should be visible. In a separate video, I will explain a few ways to save this image, including how to make sure that anything outside of the artboard will not be visible when you export.